How's it going? Kevin Kenny, welcome to a brand new edition of the Build Series. And our next guest has been pretty easy to find if you've taken a look at the Billboard Rock charts over the past month. Their single, Are You Ready, has been number one with a bullet for the past four weeks. And their brand new album, Evolution, is available everywhere tomorrow. Please, let's give the loudest of Build welcomes to our guest today, Disturbed. Yeah. I like that. These fans are bouncing over here on their seats. They're so excited. This is amazing. This is Let me see cool. you bounce. <laughs> it's a great t-shirt, too. Guys, thanks so much for stopping by. And what a day to, to speak with you. I, th I thought I knew what we were going to talk about today. Then I woke up and I went on Billboard.com and I saw 45 dates announced in this massive world tour of yours. First off, thank you. I think I speak for all of us, right? That's a massive tour you're giving us. It's just the tip of the iceberg. There's more to come. That's crazy to even think about. I was joking with you guys in the back. I go, 45 dates. I'm exhausted just saying that out loud. And then you're telling me that's just the tip of the iceberg. It really said. is. I mean, we're expecting this to be a very deep, long, and fulfilling cycle. Well, I think we're very excited, and really the cycle, I guess you could say, maybe it's underway, but it really gets underway officially tomorrow with the release of the record. We can't wait. It's so exciting, and just the response. I mean, I w you guys have been around for a minute. You've done a lot throughout your careers. To have Are You Ready be the fastest rising charting single of the entire run, put that into words for me. Uh, it's overwhelming. First of all, I mean, to have a career for as long as we have due to the fans for giving us this life, I mean... Uh, you know, we, we still got the fire under us. We still feel like we have a lot to say. There's a, always something to sing about, always something to find that's therapeutic for us. And, uh, you know, with Are You Ready kind of coming out of the gate as strong as it has, it just, you know, pumps us up. We're excited to hit the road with this now. Yeah. You talk about just the unprecedented success of this single. It must be made just a little bit sweeter, though. You talk about the connection of the fans. You guys chose this single. I mean, you put it up as a poll. You're like, what should we drop first? And they chose Are You Ready? How does that change things, guys? The fans have more power than they may realize <laughs> um, in many ways. Uh, as Danny said, it, 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 we really are dependent on them. Uh, they are our life's blood when we share our you know, little rallying cry that happens just about every performance that we have. And I say the expression, my brothers and sisters, my blood, we mean that. These people are not just family to us, they're life. So putting the decision in their hands seemed really only appropriate. You know, they're the ones who, that truly guide our destiny to begin with. That was, of course, the overwhelming response from the fans. What was the idea within the group? Did you guys have a different idea for the lead single? Was, was it a popular decision among you guys? Was it Are You Ready? And I think we, we kind of knew that everybody would probably, or most of them would probably gravitate towards the heavier, aggressive track. Um, which we'll always have that in us. That's the core of, of who we are, what's always inspired us. But um, the idea of just the new material and us just evolving, really, and in, in trying other things and branching out, uh, we knew that when they get a taste of songs like A Reason to Fight and some of the softer ones, that there's still some dark meaning, some dark message. These are life experiences, and we realize when we wear our heart on our sleeve and, and, and put it out there that other people connect to that as well. Yeah, the messaging on this album, you know, you guys have always been authentic. That's nothing new. Uh, but they're, these are coming from, as you just alluded to, real life experiences. And let's go right there. The, the video we just showed the audience here in studio for A Reason to Fight, it's a song that really addresses addiction. And I know it comes from a personal place. Would you guys like to talk about that songwriting process? Well, I, it's certainly something that Unfortunately, um, every member of the band has had some personal experience with. Um, we've all had loved ones that we've lost to the demon of addiction and depression. Um, and they do go hand in hand. Um, we've all experienced losses, not only personal ones, but ones within the musical community of late that have just been absolutely devastating. Um, almost too much to bear between uh, Chester and, and, and Chris and Scott and, and, and the list just keeps go, going on. Uh, we, it's time to stop sitting on the sidelines. It's time to start mobilizing and getting really actively involved with people in your lives that you know are struggling with this demon. Don't wait till you have to bury them in the ground. You know, be an advocate, intervene, get your friends to intervene, um, be a reason for them to continue to keep on fighting. 
give them that inspiration? It's a tough subject and it's a tough question I'm about to ask, but you know, do your best, guys. Is when you think about, you alluded to the, um, you've been around people not just in music, but of course in music that we've lost to this terrible addiction, this demon, as you put it. What role does rock and roll and the machine, the beast of rock and roll, if you will, does what role does that play? in these losses? Is this something that you guys feel, you know, is within the person? Are there elements of the business or, or the lifestyle that lead to it or exacerbate it, if you will? Anyone can fall prey to it. There isn't a specific walk of life. There isn't a specific set of circumstances that um, precipitate it necessarily. Uh, everyone has their moments of loneliness. Everyone has their moments of vulnerability. Now, when you are in a band, and uh, you are under the microscope 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and constantly being judged, constantly being evaluated, there's a lot of pressure involved with that. And as glamorous as the life can be sometimes, it can also be very isolating. It can be very lonely. You spend weeks and months away from your family, away from any sense of normalcy, away from home, away from the things that you've come to love and be familiar with, to trade them up for something that you also love and are familiar with. And, and, and while the time that you spend on stage is the most blessed and amazing time that we could ever hope for in our existence, sometimes getting from point A to point B is a difficult trip. Yeah. And so, yeah, there, there is something certainly to be said about this walk of life being a difficult one and not one that everybody can handle without falling prey to the demon. Getting into the, uh, the record that we're going to get tomorrow, uh, you guys have said this is uncharted territory. There's a lot of new things and elements, but be it vocal stylings, be it instrumentation that we're going to hear on this record that we have not heard from you guys before. But one thing I want to uh, address right off the top that I'm excited as a fan of your music to hear is the effect of being all together in the same room, from what I gather, making a record uh, for the first time in quite a while on this uh, on this evolution that we'll get tomorrow. Can we just go down the line? Because I'm sure it affected each of you differently just that element of being together. So I'll begin with you, of course, and then. Yeah, I mean, we did, we made a conscious effort starting with the, immor with the Immortalized record, to be perfectly honest. Coming off of the hiatus, we felt it was very, very important to get back to where we were when we wrote the Believe record, for us all to be in the same room together, creating at the same time. Because truth be told is I'm very, very much dependent on the other guys as and, and vice versa as a barometer for our respective pieces of music that end up becoming a part of the overall equation. Um, the, the opinions that carry the most weight to us in our creative lives are each other's. And, and, and so um, there's, no, there's no replacing the energy and the vibe and the feel that you get from instant improvisation, from instant um, you know, just taking a stab in whatever direction feels right and then gauging the response from your colleagues. It's, it's, it's to us, it's something that we'll never ever deviate from again. And in particular, this record, we didn't have as many opportunities to um, get together with this one prior to entering the studio. So literally 70 to 80% of this record was written in the studio in, fr in front of each other. And that it turned out the way that it did is evidence of just how magical and amazing that actual journey was for all of us. Yeah, I think a, a big thing to add to that is just when we look for some of our inspiration towards any new material and we look at some of the great classic rock bands and metal bands and we think, what makes some of those songs so great that stand the test of time? And for one of them is, they wrote those songs in a room together. Yeah, I mean, we're, the technology today is a great tool to use, you know, to be able to come up with ideas and record it on Pro Tools or send files. But, it, you know, it, there's, it's something more magical, like David said, when you're in the room together and you can improvise and you could feed off each other when somebody's showing excitement. It, there's way more, you know, better results from that, in our opinion. And even though you can get the ball rolling with ideas, it's like... But if I write a riff, then I, yeah, I just email it to Mike, and he comes up with a beat, and he, then you're waiting for a response. It's just cool. not really. Yeah, it's, it's like sterile. you're not having that yes, connection. Very, very sterile. Um, so it's just those moments when we know we're in a room and we're improvising, and I could work out a riff, and Mike's you know, tweaking the beat, and then David's feeling that, that rhythm, and, and John as well. And 
you know, it's just that's the way it should be. That's the way it, it always was. And that's why maybe a lot of those great classic songs have stood the test of time uh, because it was that improvising moment and capturing that together. Yeah, it's a lost art for sure. How did uh, being all in the same room affect you guys? Well, just the chemistry that we have after being together for so long and, and being a family like we are. There's, that's like, like, like they keep saying, it's, you, you, can't, you, can't, uh, you can't replace that. Um, it's almost like nowadays uh, people want to want to argue via text message. You can't you can't get the tone of voice. There you're not you 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 don't know if someone's trying to be a smartass. You're always know. angry. Right. Always angry. Yeah, it's yeah right. So, you know, being in a room together or at least being on the phone if you're gonna argue. It, oh, that's a great point. How many out. fights do we get into on a daily basis? Probably that are like that's not that's not even what I was saying. It was a stupid text. You know what I mean? But please, yeah, thank God for emojis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, David touched on something too, the um, the immediacy of, of having that moment when you capture how you feel. Historically, you know, we've done a lot of these records where we've come in tremendously prepared with demos that almost sound like a record ready to go before we've even gone in the studio, where we've played the parts over and over, where we definitely know what we're doing going into the studio. That's great. And then this other side, you know, for me in particular, I came in and um, these guys had already put together a bulk of the material. And when I walked in, it was all very fresh to me. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to make sure that my parts were recorded with that immediacy, that um, intensity of having playing it and writing the part right there in the moment and recording it and not something that I had practiced over and over and I came in and I was playing by rote. Right. Um, so uh, for my part, as far as my bass lines on this record, they were just... It was just a whirlwind of creativity and, you know, magical moments, you know, that they would just put together and, and, you know, put all over the songs. And it's one of my favorite writing processes that we've done. Did you find that approach? Recording processes. Of I course, yeah. Well, did you find that uh, approach led to less overthinking on your behalf as a musician? Just like having natural reactions to what they were bringing you as a This guy's to... going to overthink everything every time right here. <laughs> Dan. <laughs> He'll balance it he out. He can't help himself. We're heavy overthinkers. <laughs> it's a healthy balance. But I'll bring it back for one second. Yeah. Even back to the sickness days in talking about capturing that moment. And for example, like the beginning of Stupefy, when the intro, when David did that vocal performance, I think it was like a one take thing when we did it and, and the demo, not even the album version. And we wanted to use that take because when we tried to recreate it making the album, it was maybe a little bit more overthinking. Now you have something to match up to, but that first moment of him capturing it in that demo stage, we're like, this is the take right there, and, and we use that. Yeah, so I'm by no means an actor, but I've spoken to actors in interviews and such, and they, sometimes it's, it, there is that element to acting of like the first take's the best take, you know what I mean? Just because you're not thinking about it, it's just natural. You guys, uh, I think, just exclusively recorded the whole record in Vegas, is that right? That's correct. It's kind of a funny thing to ask, but like, do you ever, can you hear Vegas on the record? Because sometimes, you know, people do like a New York record or. Makes no difference. No difference. Not to on you. this one. Hey, no? To us, it was just a place to record. Okay. Um, you know, Kevin Churko, our producer, was a brilliant creative mind in his own right. And that's just where he feels most comfortable doing his craft. So um, we have no problem going to him. Uh, if we want to get ourselves into a little bit of trouble, we can venture into the city. If right we want to stay good boys, we remain good boys. But truth be told is that our work ethic is so like obsessive, not just strong, but obsessive once we enter those doors. Nothing else matters at that point. We're all about the creativity and the process. Yeah. You could be on Mars. Really doesn't matter. Yeah, truly. Um, when you talk about uncharted territory on this record, and uh, you sound very liberated, you sound very free, you know, when I've seen recent interviews with you guys, how much of that, though, if any, is tied to just the runaway success of Sound of Silence? Did Sound of Silence and this, this just, again, the runaway, the blow up success of that, did that, I don't know, not redefine you guys in your own minds, but did it give you a, a longer leash on what you guys could actually be? Let's put it this way We have been talking about working on acoustic material or ballads or however you want to define them uh, for more than a decade, maybe even longer. So we've had the intention of doing some of these things for quite a while. Now, when we saw that we could be that successful with something that was so different from what Disturbed is stereotypically known for, it gave us the confidence to prioritize the acoustic and ballad section 
first this time, to work on those ideas to begin with. And what we thought was, was going to actually end up being just a separate entity in and of itself became something that was so compelling. These songs were so strong, each and every one of them individually on their own right, that it became impossible to separate them from the main body of work and to take it another step. The entire previous touring cycle, we normally will listen to pre-show music in the dressing room and every touring cycle prior to the immortalized cycle had been hard rock and heavy metal, you know, Sabbath, Priest, Maiden, that kind of stuff. And this whole immortalized cycle, we were listening to classic rock. We we're listening to Zeppelin, the Eagles, Fleetwood Mac, uh, things like that, and uh, old, um, yeah, those, those old classic heritage rock records were so diverse, and they weren't just one dynamic. They, they, they took you in so many different directions and took you on this amazing journey. And after we had developed these acoustic numbers, ballads, to the level that they had become, it made sense to intertwine them, to make it one long story, to make it one long roller coaster ride, if you will. And, and, and we, at, we found it incredibly fulfilling. Was it scary at all that you maybe taken on a life of its own, that song? Because I think it's fair to say there's a lot of, you know, I think like hits one on Sirius, like their top 40 stations playing that in heavy rotation. Was there any element of fear of what's going to happen to the, you know, the core Disturbed fans that like Heavy Disturbed and then all these new uh, quote-unquote pop fans coming over that, that met you on that song? It sounds so f funny to say because you've been around for so long. but Look, you, you always... As we've said before, our fans are our life's blood, and we truly do mean that. And so their impression of things and their opinion of things is tremendously important to us. But when we start out, the only impressions that the four of us are really concerned about are each other's. We want to make sure that we're inspiring one another. We want to make sure that what we've just created makes the goosebumps appear on our own flesh. And when we heard back the finished product, of what we had done with the cover of Sound of Silence, to us it was undeniable. And I think at the end of the day, no matter what kind of fan you are, whether you like the heavy stuff, whether you enjoy the lighter stuff, whether you enjoy both, a great song is a great song. And it's gonna reach you and it's gonna translate to you. And you know, you gotta have different vibes for different moments and sometimes a caress feels best when it's preceded by a nice smack. <laughs> well said. Uh, I, something I wanted to ask you about before and I forgot to, but I think it's such a cool story with the success of Are You uh, Ready, the new single. Is, is it true that the music for that actually dates back to 04? Is that an old piece of music? Yeah, I always have this way of sneaking back in old riffs that might not have seen the light of day before. But we, it was actually during, uh, I think around the time when John first entered the band. 10,000 Fists. For 10,000 Fists. We already had a lot of material in the works and... That was just an idea I had musically that, that I put on the back burner because we ended up putting like what, 19 songs on the album any, anyway. Yeah. So uh, you we really didn't need more time. material, so I just put it on, on the back burner. And um, as we were starting the writing process for Evolution, I was just kind of going through old riffs in the archives of seeing if there was anything that, that struck a nerve with me again. And, and I, I didn't say anything to the guy. I just kind of threw the demo of it back into it to see if it would spark a reaction. And... Sure enough, it was like one of the first things David gravitated towards and said, oh, dude, I got something great for this. And, and to be perfectly honest, I didn't realize that he had already shown it to me years prior. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. Right. So I, I, before I let the cat out of the bag, I made sure to, that he got further along with the idea and liked it. And then, and then I said, hey, by the way, that was kind of a 2004 idea. That, that's why it still got that very similar old school disturbed sound and, and with some of the electronics and just the groove of it was really cool. And I'm glad uh, I found a way to sneak it back into the mix of things and, and, and so turn it into something. So. There's, there's something so badass, though, about just sitting on, like, a number one record for 14 years, you know, just, like, having it on your computer somewhere, and then, oh, let's just drop this. goes number one for a month. It's so crazy. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny because as much as we've been talking about the evolution of the album and some of the new ideas, and then the first thing that we drop is, is something that's the most... Disturbed yeah, one-on-one. Yeah, it, it's kind of it? I think it speaks to the best of both worlds, you know what I mean? We're going to get a lot of new, but then still, you know, that speaks to just... 
really the consistency, but also um, look as much of an adventure as we in, as we liked to take with the material on this record. The one thing that we can absolutely promise everyone is we will always stay the disturbed that you've come to know and love. We're never going to divorce ourselves completely from the heavy stuff. We love it. We we just enjoy it too much, and I know you guys do too. But now we're trying to offer more to that palette. We're trying to expand the definition of what we are. And we feel that people are ready for it. Yeah. So hopefully we're right. 45 cities better be ready because they're coming their <laughs> way. Also, uh, I should mention this. Uh, we've had him on the show before. Three Days Grace will be actually supporting you guys. It sounds like the whole way. So round of applause for Three Days Grace. If we have any fans here. Those are great guys. It's going to be such a crazy. I'm very excited. Try not to fanboy right now. Uh, but I want to uh, I want to take it back before we turn it over to the fans. We've got some great questions coming up. Uh, do we have a, that photo? We have a prize for you guys. We're going to have a little bit of a... I've deemed uh -oh. this Disturbed Idol. You guys know American Idol, those singing competition shows? Well, this is the Disturbed yeah. version. Uh, if we can get a close shot of that on camera one right here. Uh, that was just taken uh, moments ago, actually, backstage. Cool picture of the guys. They were nice enough to sign that. That is the grand prize. The way this is going to work, um, let me explain. You guys remember Down With The Sickness? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sound too thrilled, guys. Don't sound too thrilled. Uh, but you... I have a feeling I know where this is going. You, I mean, what would you call this? A, a sound? A, a scat? A, what, would you, what would you call this iconic we noise? We affectionately refer to it as the waka kaka. Can it, before, we turn, before we start the game, can I get your best waka kaka? No. You know what? You got to come to the show. We've got three got huge that, disturbed <laughs> fans in attendance today. Let me, let me tell you, yeah. when you actually do it, it takes quite a bit of technique. Okay. And I'd rather not have to expend it now. There it's, you go. The, it's, it's actually a saving grace for me that now it's become kind of like our rock and roll all night and party every day, like where you can't leave it out of the set, and it's always towards the end of the set, because by that point of the set, my pipes are so nice and warm, and I, my, my, I'm, I'm so balanced as far as the technique that I know I'm not going to hurt myself. If I do it right out of the gate just like that, there's a good chance that there may be some wear and tear. So I'm going to... Save it for the garden, guys. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Save it for the garden day. That's going to be awesome. Uh, well, hopefully you guys have warmed up, because we've got he three huge disturbed fans that are going to compete for that audience picture and give it their best a waka kaka let's and hear you it. guys have to decide amongst yourselves who did it the best you ready we're gonna, gonna have the audio ready but first let's meet the fans contest number one you want to stand uh stand up my yeah what's your name where are you from man hey uh i'm jerry and i'm from boston actually there how's it going go. guys all right big all fan right. how long you been a fan of theirs ever since the waka kaka days <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's an era now. Um, so it's been explained to me that we're going to have the uh, audio ready. We're going to lead you into it, and then you're going to give it your best go. I'm getting the thumbs up. That's how it's going to work. Uh, so this is uh, Jerry, you said? Yeah, I'm Jerry. Yep. Jerry from Boston, and he's contestant number one on Disturbed Idol. Take it away. I like where this is going. Yeah. Yeah. Give it up for Jerry. That was Pretty awesome. Good. Dude, high five. That was fucking awesome, dude. <laughs> Love it. All right. Jerry, it's contest number one. All right, contest number two. Hair than me. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Guy. I'm from St. Pete. I just want to thank you guys for your music and everything it's helped me through. I'm a cancer survivor, so those were three of the hardest years I went through. So thank you. Glad you're still here with us. Yeah. Hey, you beat it along with me, so... Wow. <laughs> We're getting the caca. You got some power behind there, though, dude. I haven't had none so I'm a little angry. I love that. That was the shortened version. I dig that a lot. All right, contest number three. What is your name and where are you from? I'm Christian from New York. I I've love it. I'm a big fan. Um, my favorite song is The Night. I love oh, awesome. that song. Awesome. Good one. Yeah, we love that one. Very cool. Christian, take it away, please. Oh, what? All right. Give it up for Christian, contest number three. Right. Yeah. Nicely done, nicely done. All right, very cool. I like it. we're just dropping the caca at the end, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, all right, so you had a uh, tough decision, guys. Please, you know, talk amongst yourselves. We got contest number one, contest number two, and contest number three there at the end. Who will it be, guys? Have we decided? Contestant number one. All right, Jared. Yeah. Unanimous. Good job. That, uh, you actually want to give it on? Do you mind? Yeah. The inaugural, uh, 
winner of Disturbed Idol. Our very yeah. own Kelly Clarkson. Oh, that was awesome. He's starting a Great Disturbed job. cover band tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll lend you my old piercings. You can go ahead and wear them. Hey, did you, were you surprised that that made so many headlines this week? Yeah. Yeah, right? People went crazy Do you guys that. really care? <laughs> really? You miss them? You, you, want, you want me to give them to you? You're going to shave your head and put them in there for you? No? no. It'd be quite the eBay listing. Thank you, dear. I appreciate that. What have what brought it upon? Did it, was this something that broke this week, or did you take them out this no, week? No, no. I mean, they've been out for a while. That's the irony. It's like, you know, it when, when that first Metal Hammer article came out, um, I already didn't have them in, so it, it, I don't know why all of a sudden people lost their minds about it. But uh, <laughs> look, I, I honestly don't think that at the end of the day that any one of you is either going to come or not going to come to a Disturbed show or buy a record or not buy a record based on whether or not I'm wearing LeBray piercings, right? Yeah. Okay, so we still understand one another and we're still friends and fans and all that kind of stuff? All right. But so everyone here is buying the record, right? Bed, you know? There you go. All Thank right. You, now we have, uh, in addition to Disturbed Idol, we also have some great questions from the fans. We're going to get to our first one, which will come from where? Over here. There you go. Sorry. Hi. You guys are awesome, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Which song on the new record means the most to you guys, or was the most fun to write, and why? Ooh. Tough, because this record is full of songs that, I mean, literally each and every one of them have very deep and intense meaning to us. Um, yeah, A Reason to Fight is definitely one of the ones that I think for all of us has... Uh, particularly poignant meaning because of our own personal experiences and because of how cathartic it is for us as individuals. Um, and truth be told is that that song happened so, you know, miraculously and so spontaneously. It was such an amazing experience. Danny was just basically messing around with uh, this beautiful finger-picked pattern that he had been toying around with for days that I had hear him messing around with in different parts of the studio. And we had hit kind of a brick wall on another idea, and we decided to shift gears, and he started messing with it. And I, as he started messing with it, I started hearing a melody idea come up in my head. And I'm like, keep playing it, keep playing it. And we took it to uh, the other room, to the live room in the studio. And, and, and Kevin, our producer, ended up getting on the piano as well to help us identify some of uh, where we were going to end up going with it. And we literally wrote it right then and there. And, and, and the music. Uh, the, the musical part of it, both both uh, vocal melody and instrumentation, literally came together within 24 hours. It was very quick. Uh, the lyric took quite a bit more time, but um, just watching it unfold, and it was one of the periods in, in the studio where we actually had the cameraman on it the entire time. So the whole thing was recorded, the creation of it. It was, for, for us, just a really magical moment. Great question. Uh, we have time for a few more. Let's get to number two. It'll come from over here. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. My question's for David. I was wondering, what did, let's say, your time in yeshiva or growing up in the Orthodox world, how did that influence your music in the way? It made me very angry. <laughs> it made me very rebellious because, um, you know, as much as I respect the culture and I certainly respect my heritage and, and, and I, uh, you know, I don't have any disdain for any of it, but human beings are equipped with a gag reflex for a reason. If you have something shoved down your throat, you throw that thing back up most of the time. So it's, it's just not, it wasn't something that was comfortable for me. It wasn't something that was natural. Was, I wanted just to be a normal teenage kid. I wanted to be able to hang out with girls and watch TV and go to movies and not have to wear a silly uniform every day to school and all those things. And, and, and just to be a normal teenage kid. And my desire to be a normal teenage kid was viewed as evil in the eyes of the people that were running the yeshivot. For people who don't understand what that term is, it's a, a, a religious school or a seminary of sorts. Uh, I went to five parochial boarding schools, got thrown out of four of them, and somehow managed to last out at the last one. So, Thanks so yeah, question. it made me angry. <laughs> uh, we have time for one final question, and it'll come from right here up front. 
Hi, everyone. My name is Melissa. I live in New Jersey. Uh, thanks so much for coming to see us today. Um, congratulations on the new record that comes out tomorrow. Uh, definitely been a fan since the beginning from the sickness days, um, with the new record being called Evolution. Um, I'm just curious, as a band, um, how, are you, how have you evolved as a band from the uh, sickness days to the Evolution days? And what was the real inspiration behind this record? Uh, I mean, just the, the long history of friendship, of the musicianship between us, the, the growth, uh, us coming in and kind of just understanding each other as musicians and having that mutual respect and um, an open mind. And uh, I think everything from the, with it being called evolution, just the, the, like I said, the growth of, of our long history together, but just feeling at, the, at this point with our music even though David had mentioned, we'll always have that, that core sound of Disturbed. We're always gonna have you know, the meat and potatoes that, that is us. But um, when we write, you know, we've written over 100 and something songs together, so the, the only critics I'm worried about are the guys that I'm trying to inspire with my ideas that, that I may present to get the ball rolling. So, um, you know, so it's just, it's just great that we've all come into it with such an open mind and, and we explore new paths and we're we're looking to grow we're like david mentioned we're looking to just branch out and just show other sides to this band we're, there's more than one flavor you know we're not a one trick pony we feel like we have a lot a lot more areas that we can continue to inspire each other and that's why we take those chances a lot to look forward to at midnight tonight when the album drops guys one more time for disturbed